services overnight. We don't believe that there's much possibility of doing that while you've got a very large economic international driver, the US dollar adjustment, which is going on. Sorry, Dr. Boyle, I just once again, just on the, um, on the markets, uh, look, I just wonder then, um, given that you're uh, giving such a cautious approach or uh, almost a warning to markets about uh, the medium term, uh, I just wonder then why in your set of four, this is what you're saying in your set of forecasts, uh, how come that is not being picked up by the rest of the market? Well, I mean, again, I need to ask the rest of the market. The, there, there's a view around the world that um, central banks are going to need to look to exit from stimulus and eventually look to tightening. That's an international view. Uh, we don't believe it's going to first happen in New Zealand. Uh, actually, looking out into the future, we, don't, we also don't believe that we have a big problem when it comes to removing stimulus. The areas of unorthodox monetary policy that we've done are reasonably straightforward to exit from where we wish to exit from them and then it's simply a straightforward matter at some stage when we see international recovery of getting the official cash rate up. Uh, of course, it's not anywhere near zero as it is in many northern hemisphere economies and uh, again, we don't think it's as difficult to return it more to neutral, but we also don't believe that the time for doing that is anywhere near. We're giving these uh, a clear picture of our views. The market will reach its own view. You've had to revise your, um, your TWI outlook for the currency upwards quite a bit, yep. quite drastically. Um, and given the unpredictability around this area, have you had to build in a bigger sort of margin for wiggle room here? Well, it is a, a very difficult area for forecasters around New Zealand and, and around the world at the moment. We're all finding that our forecasts have been, we have had to change them as a result of the higher than expected New Zealand dollar or lower than expected US dollar. And uh, we all know that we don't have a high degree of precision around those. In fact, in the short term, we have very little forecasting ability there. That's accepted amongst economic forecasters. So there is a high degree of uncertainty as to where that New Zealand dollar, US dollar cross goes. Is there anything you, either of you would wish to add to that? No. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dr. Bollard, just how uh, worried are you about the um, effect of the high dollar on um, prospects for an export-led recovery? Uh, the we have in this forecast, as, as I've just said, had to contend with a higher than expected level of the New Zealand US dollar cross rate. But at the same time, we have also have a slightly stronger export picture than we expected. Actually, both export volumes have, have been stronger and export prices have been a bit stronger as well. The latter is very much a consequence of a stronger international commodity price story. Uh, we've been very pleased to observe the evidence of the dairy price bottoming out and showing some growth uh, after two um, uh, monthly auctions with very significant increases in there. We believe that's enough evidence to say that the, the, the longer term price looks healthier. That does have quite a significant effect and actually um, helps balance out that higher New Zealand US dollar cross rate. It, but at, at what level is it being completely offset though? Well, I mean, I, I can't answer that precisely. There's a lot of ways that the exchange rate impacts the current account through different classes of export, depending on how elastic they are, um, imports, and of course the investment, the net investment income balance, which in New Zealand is, is a pretty important part of the current account. Uh, but um, we would be disappointed if we saw this trend continuing because there is no doubt that it will cut into New Zealand export returns and uh, it puts at risk the recovery that we're seeing in our current account deficit. Already we're forecasting a deficit that's gone from 8% through 7% and forecast to go to about 6% but even on our forecasts in here uh, it starts to retract a little bit and that is an undesirable thing for us in this environment. Dr Bollard, just on the markets, um, you may recall David Long, he once called them demented reef fish. It sounds as though you, you agree with that view. 
well, he may very well have said that, but um, we wouldn't actually put it quite in those terms. We do get some information out of them. Dr Bollard, um, the recent rise in house prices, does that give you any concern and do you see that as a bit of a false dawn for the market given your earlier forecasts on prices to fall? John, would you like to hand it up? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen house prices um, fall, so peak to trough about 10 or 11 per cent. I think three months ago we were expecting about 16 per cent. What we've seen recently and what we expect over the next three months is a little bit of retracement of that fall and I'm looking for some stability in house prices. Uh, one of the key factors behind uh, the tightness in the housing market is just a, a limited number of listings in the housing market and there's a good chance over the spring that that may well change. Uh, Dr Bollard, you've warned about the imbalances in the economy. Uh, what can you do about them apart from putting up the official cash rate? Well, uh, the imbalances we're talking about are basically domestic external imbalances and what um, we're concerned to see or we're concerned not to see is that a, a household sector newly invigorated with confidence ploughs back into housing in a major sort of way. We don't think that's going to happen but the consequence of that happening could be a move back into debt, increased household consumption and very importantly reduction in household savings. To say we don't expect to see that happening, but we'll be watching that part of it very closely. I think New Zealanders have been through this period and have realised that house prices uh, don't keep going up forever, uh, that they do need to look at a range of different ways of building up their own balance sheets, that they do need to think more seriously about savings. And of course, that's in a context where the New Zealand government at the minute is unable to save as it has traditionally done. So New Zealanders should be thinking about saving themselves uh, to ensure that our national investment and balance doesn't get out of, out of proportion. Uh, could you consider um, changing, for example, capital adequacy rules to encourage the banks to lend less into housing and farming? Well, in principle, we can consider that. In fact, we have considered that in the past, provided it is done for the purposes of that part of the Reserve Bank Act, which is to promote soundness and efficiency in the financial system. Now we did look at doing that a couple of years ago as we started to see this housing bubble build up. The fact is that when you look at that in detail and simulate what it might actually require, uh, it tends to um, sometimes require quite big changes in capital and it doesn't always impact the particular banks that you would expect or hope that it might impact and actually we ended up from that concluding that capital adequacy ratios as a short-term stabilisation tool make the official cash rate look very scientific and very analytical and very sophisticated. Uh, in the statement there's um, some comments on the New Zealand dollar and uh, how it's moving. It seems more with the S&P 500 than it is with uh, local interest rates. Could you have put up interest rates and not increase the New Zealand dollar? Uh, we didn't consider that option, um, although I believe that um, Israel tried that one recently yes. without too much effect. Uh, Dr. Dr. Bollard, um, in the um, box on the New Zealand dollar, you talk about it being uh, the, the, the rise being unjustified and at odds with recent developments in the economy. At what point does it meet the parameters where the bank intervenes in the currency? Uh, we don't discuss publicly our intervention um, policies. Or but practices. broadly speaking, what are what are the sort of um, the things where you were well the parameters that you would um, intervene in terms of? Uh, well, as I, I think said, we don't extreme and that. unjustified. I think is, is is the term that you've used in the past. We don't discuss that publicly for obvious reasons. Um, just one other question about